Book of Heaven, Volume 20, Part 22 February 16th, 1927 How the Fiat Places Everything in Communication Wherever It Rains Example of the Spouses The operating of the divine will is the fullness of the acts and the triumph of the divine act in the human. I was making my round in the whole creation to bring all created things together with me before the Supreme Majesty as homages, praises, adorations, because they are the works of his creative hands, worthy of he alone who had created them, for they are animated by his divine will. But while I was doing this, I thought to myself, created things do not move, they stay in their place, they do not come with me. So it is useless to say that I bring them together with me, because they do not come. But while I was thinking of this, my sweet Jesus came out from within my interior, and at the same time he showed me my little soul having many rays centralized within itself that maintained the communication with each created thing in such a way that they were in communication with me and I with them. But the principal point of origin from which these rays started was God, who maintained the communications with everyone and with everything. And my lovable Jesus told me, My daughter, wherever my will reigns with its light, that no one can resist because it is immense and penetrating, it places everything in communication. Each ray starts from the divine center in which my will has its principal dwelling. The rays are nothing other than the acts which the divine fiat issues from itself, by which, investing each created thing, it forms its life, and as many secondary dwellings in each one of them. Now, it is a natural thing that, for the soul in whom my will reigns, as she forms her acts in my volition, all created things receive the communication of that act by virtue of the light that unites them. And along the flight of that same light, they unite together in order to follow the act that the soul in whom my will reigns does. In fact, one is the will that they possess. One is the strength. Therefore, one is the act they want to do. It is my will itself that moves everything and makes the act of one act of all. Therefore, be certain that even though created things remain at their place, they all follow you. My will itself puts them on the way to you so that you may not be alone, but all of them may accompany you. It happens as in a wedding. The bride and the groom walk in the front by themselves, but behind them comes their retinue in great number of those who are invited. You are the bride with whom my will wanted to form its royal wedding. It wanted to knock down the division, the obstacles that existed between you and itself, in order to form the happiest couple that has ever existed. So these are days of celebration for you and for it. 
Your acts, animated by the divine fiat, are continuous invitations that you make to all the things come out of our creative hands. Therefore, your invitation is extremely vast, nor is there anyone who can do without accepting, because it is a divine will that calls all of its works to its banquet, excluding not even my celestial mamma, and I'll feel honored and triumphant to attend the wedding and to participate in the nuptial banquet of this supreme will of mine. Therefore, they anxiously await your acts, your invitations, your calls, so as to come and sit at the banquet and celebrate the two spouses. Therefore, you go in the front together with my will before the Supreme Majesty. My works follow you behind. And this happens with justice, because in creating all things, it is to the creature that we gave supremacy over all our works. That is, to the creature in whom our divine fiat was to reign fully, not to the creature degraded by her will. This one is the last of all, and has no right, nor communication. While the creature in whom my will reigns has the right to be the first one to call everyone and to be followed by everyone. Therefore, the operating in my will is the greatest miracle and the fullness of all acts united together and the triumph of the divine act in the human act because my will was as though sterile in the midst of creatures and is now made happy by its first daughter in whom it sees the many births from itself that shall come to light. So it shall live no more as a sterile mother in the midst of the people, but as a mother fecund with many children. It once was a widow because in creating the first man, it espoused the human nature, dowering it with the immense riches of its will, as the seal of the marriage it formed with man. As he withdrew from it, it remained a widow for many centuries. But now it has removed the mourning of its widowhood, and marrying again, has taken on its garments of bride again, and has put out once again its dowries into the field. And the seal of the dowries are the knowledges about it, through which it gives the gift of the riches it possesses. Therefore, my daughter, be attentive, in preserving your garments of bride and enjoying the dominions that my will has given you as dowry. February 19th, 1927. Jesus invites her to fight. How Jesus fights through his knowledges, through the examples, through the teachings, while the soul fights by receiving them and by following the acts of his will in creation and redemption. I was continuing my flight in the divine fiat, and my sweet Jesus made himself seen coming out from within my interior and braiding his hands with mine, inviting me to fight with him. I was so very little, and I did not feel capable and strong to fight with him. More so since a voice came out from within a light that said, She is too little. How can she win this fight? And Jesus answered, On the contrary, it is because she is little that she can win, because all the strength is in littleness. 
I was disheartened, nor did I dare to fight with Jesus. And he, inciting me to the fight, told me, My daughter, courage, try. If you win, you shall win the kingdom of my will. Nor should you stop because you are little, because I have placed at your disposal all the strength of created things. So, together with you, fights all the strength contained in the heavens, in the sun, in the water, in the wind, in the sea. They all wage battle on me. They do it with me to make me surrender the kingdom of the divine fiat. They do it with creatures, with the weapons that each created thing has in its power to make them surrender to recognizing my will so that creatures may let it rain as they themselves let it rain. And wanting to win, they all have placed themselves as though in order for battle. And seeing that creatures resist, wanting to win by all means, because they have with them the strength of that will that animates them and dominates them, with the weapons they possess, they knock down people and cities with such empire that no one can resist them. You cannot comprehend all the strength and power that all the elements contain. It is such that if my will did not keep them as though restrained, the battle would be so fierce that they would make a heap of the earth. Now, their strength is also yours. Therefore, you make your round in their midst to put them in order for battle. Let your act your continuous asking for the kingdom of the supreme fiat, call all creation to stand at attention. And my will, moving within it, places all of its acts in royal office in order to give and to win its kingdom in the midst of creatures. Therefore, it is my volition itself that fights, that wages battle with my very will for the triumph of its kingdom. So your fight is animated by it, which has sufficient and irresistible strength in order to win. Therefore, go ahead and fight, for you shall win. And besides, to fight in order to win the kingdom of the supreme fiat is the holiest fight that can exist. It is the most just and most rightful battle that can be fought. This is so true that my will itself began this battle and this fight as it formed the creation. And only when it wins completely, then shall it surrender. But do you want to know when you fight with me and I with you? I fight when I manifest to you the knowledges about my eternal fiat. So each saying, each knowledge, each simile about it is one fight and one battle that I make with you in order to win your will put it in its place created by us and call it almost by dint of fighting into the order of the kingdom of my divine volition. And as I do it with you in order to subdue your will, I start it in the midst of creatures. I fight with you when I teach you the way which you must follow, what you must do, 
in order to live in my kingdom and the happiness, the joys which you shall possess. In sum, I fight by dint of light that my knowledges contain. I fight by dint of love and by the most touching examples in such a way that you cannot resist my fight. I fight by means of promises of happiness and joy without end. My fight is persistent, nor do I ever become tired. But to win what? Your will, and in yours, those who shall recognize mine in order to live in my kingdom. And you fight with me when you receive my knowledges, and placing them in order in your soul, you form the kingdom of my supreme fiat within you. And fighting with me, you try to win my kingdom. Each one of your acts done in my will is a fight that you make with me. In each round you do, through all created things, to unite yourself to all the acts that my will does in all creation. You call all creation to wage battle in order to win my kingdom, moving my very will, dominating in all created things, so as to wage battle on my will itself in order to establish its kingdom. This is why in these times, the wind, the water, the sea, the earth, the heavens, are all in motion more than ever, waging battle against creatures as new phenomena occur. And how many more shall occur, destroying people and cities. Because in battles, it is necessary to dispose oneself to suffer losses, and many times also on the part of the winner. There have never been conquests of kingdoms without battle, and if there have been, they have not been lasting ones. You fight with me when investing everything I did and suffered in my humanity, that is, my tears, my most intimate pains, my prayers, my steps, my words, and even the drops of my blood. You impress in them your I love you. And for each one of my acts, you ask for the coming of the kingdom of my supreme fiat. Who can tell you the fight you make with me? You move my very acts to wage battle on me that I may surrender and grant you my kingdom. Therefore, I fight with you, and you fight with me. This fight is necessary to you in order to win my kingdom, and to me in order to win your will and to begin the battle in the midst of creatures so as to establish the kingdom of my supreme will. I have my own will, and all of its very power, strength, and immensity, in order to win. You have my will itself at your disposal. All creation, and all the good I did in redemption, in order to launch a formidable army to wage battle and win the kingdom of the supreme fiat. See, each word you write is also a fight that you make with me, one more soldier that joins the army that must win the kingdom of my will. Therefore, be attentive, my daughter, for these are times of fight, and it is necessary to use all means in order to win.
February 21st, 1927. The reason for the great interest of Jesus in wanting to make the divine will known. My poor mind was wandering within the many knowledges about the supreme volition, and I thought to myself, Why does Jesus have so much interest that this divine will be known? and that it reign in the midst of creatures. Now, while I was thinking of this, my always lovable Jesus came out from within my interior and told me, My daughter, do you want to know why I have so much interest in making my will known, and that it reign in the midst of creatures? Because it alone is the means to be able to redo the creature. And it places me, and her, in the condition of being able, I to give, and she to receive. Until my will returns, triumphant and dominating, into the midst of creatures, I shall not be able to give what I want and they shall lack the capacity and the space to be able to receive that which I can and want to give. In fact, my will alone has this virtue, this power, that establishing order and balance between creator and creature. It opens all the ways of communication between them, God has his royal path in order to be able to send his gifts with no danger, descend whenever he wants, and bring, personally, his greatest goods to her. And the creature, possessing the same path, can receive him or ascend in order to go herself to take that which her Lord wants to give her. As rich and powerful as a king might be, if he finds no one to whom to give, he shall never have the contentment, the satisfaction of being able to give. His riches shall remain idle, isolated, abandoned. Perhaps he shall live drowned within his own riches, but he shall never have the contentment, the happiness to give and to let others enjoy his goods, because he finds no one to whom to give them. This king shall be a king, isolated, abandoned, without cortege. He shall have no one who smiles at him, who says to him a thank you. It shall never be feast for him, because the feast is formed by giving and by receiving. So, with all his riches, this king shall have a nail in his heart, abandonment, monotony. He shall be rich, but without glory, without heroism, without name. What sorrow for this king, with all his riches. Now, my daughter, the reason for which we issued the creation and created man, was to give our riches, so that the external glory of our works may unite to the internal glory and the immense happiness 
that we possess. So, since the creature is not in our will, we feel her far away from us. There is no one who surrounds us with her thank you, nor anyone who smiles at us with delight for our works. Everything is isolation. We are surrounded by immense riches, but because our creatures are far away from us, we have no one to whom to give them. We have no one who admires our works in order to enjoy them. We are happy, but because of ourselves. Nor is there anyone who could slightly disturb our happiness. But we are forced to see the unhappiness of creatures, because being disunited from us, they cannot take and we cannot give. The human will has formed the fences and has locked the doors of communication. To give is liberality, heroism, love. To receive is grace. And the creature, by doing her own will, hinders our liberality, our heroism, our love. And if something is given, it is always restricted and given by dint of strains, of intrigues, because since the order between them and us is missing, things do not run freely. We are not capable of sorrow. Our being is untouchable by all evils. But if we were capable of sorrow, the creature would poison our existence. This is, then, the reason for all our interest in wanting to make our will known, and that it reign in the midst of creatures. We want to give. We want to see them happy of our own happiness. And our will alone can do all this. Realizing the purpose of creation and allowing us to place our goods in common O oh, will of God, how admirable, powerful, and desirable you are. Oh, please, with your empire, conquer all, make yourself known, and make us all surrender to you. Deo gratias. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 20. Fiat.